Coach Ramed, the hardest working man in the on the planet. Coach Rem Edwards just walked in the room, and the look, the look on his face when he walked <laughs> into the studio. The look on it. Sorry, Coach, you got to slum with us a little bit. I, I just want to let you know we're we're not going to kill you, Coach. I mean, no, the, you better really do good because this could be your last job here. <laughs> This could be. This could really take you over the top, right in here. What, what do you think of our facilities? I love the scenery. Yeah, <laughs> we got cookies, so you're good. Hey, my mom made so much chocolate oh, chip. Oh, I made them spirit. all, man. Yeah. I might have to have one of those a little later. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, fantastic. The mom's Thank recipe. Mom's always. You're welcome. Her, yeah. Herm Edwards takes him McLean Food Service with Armin in the back of 104.5. The team normally talk to him at 5:15, but uh, coach, you're all over the place. You got Sports Center. You got NFL Live. Uh, I think you've talked to 17 radio stations today, and now you got the best for last. I, I got you guys, and uh, that's good because I got a little break here for about uh, 30 minutes and I got to go uh, do te- television. You know, some people have faces for radio yeah, yeah and some people nice. have faces for television. And with that suit, You guys man, have you radio would. faces. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you, that. So don't, don't let anybody fool you say you got I television faces. I was just faces. about to tell them how nice your suit was. Oh, well, that's nice to you, but I'm just saying there's some people <laughs> have faces for radio, some people have faces for television. Uh, I, I've kind of, I've kind of, I'm right in the middle, but you guys definitely radio faces. <laughs> well, well uh, the problem with me is like they say the TV camera adds 10 pounds. Yeah. I ate like five of them. Uh, what about his radio so physique? According yeah. to how you dress, you know. So he's saying baggy? Coach, coach, if he former offensive lineman, that's all. Yes. <laughs> if he wore that, it wouldn't help at all. Oh, well, if he a wore lineman. You got a nice suit going on. Well, I got to wear suits. You got to wear ties. Yeah, they don't have that much fabric to make are my you, suit. Are they, you a suit and tie guy? Because you weren't a no. suit and tie guy on the sideline. No, not a suit and tie guy. Yeah. Uh, until but I came you, here. But again, like, you, look. A lot of suits, a lot of ties. Like, you know, coach works. <laughs> it's hard. hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Armin in the back, 104.5. The team, we're live in Bristol at ESPN headquarters with Coach Herm Edwards. Thanks to McLean Food Service, your home for Class A delivery drivers. Uh, coach, we got your uh, chocolate chip oat milk cookies. I'll have one before I leave. Uh, Got to start. We don't want to talk about the actual outcome yet. The Odell Beckham Jr. catch. Mm. Where does that raise? Is that the best catch ever? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a guy that says ever a lot. I know you're not. That's why I just started right I off the top I of it. Don't, I, don't, I don't go down that road. Like that. I yeah. just think you, you, you will miss something probably in life that you probably said that before sometimes. So I don't get into ever. I will say this. Um, he's got a skill set. Uh, that you can't teach. That's not coachable, what you just witnessed this kid do. I mean, this is something that um, he obviously practices it, but to do it in a game-type atmosphere takes a lot of focus, a lot of concentration. The guy has great hand-eye coordination, along with uh, soft hands. you got to have soft hands right. to catch a ball like that. Soft but strong in the sense he caught it with actually three fingers. He caught it with the two fingers and then his palm. But um, the guy has uh, the ability to catch passes we, we we've seen this already in some games he, he's caught some passes that were even very difficult right but he makes it difficult look easy so he has great ball awareness and concentration now like when you're a defensive back mm-hmm. and a guy can do that like you, you've got covered you've yeah. got him and he can do that what does that do to your mindset for the rest of the game well it's not so much your mindset to put you on highlight tapes that's yeah, never good. the wrong way and the poor db's falling down you know I, and yeah. i played that my whole life i get that part you know right. and um it's a it's a it's a it's a hard feeling because uh, you can be in good position, but if you do, and this is where I always say if you don't play the ball, you're subject to having a lot of great plays caught on you because you don't right. have a sense for the football. And this is what you have to do. I've always said this, uh, being a former defensive back, but just a former coach. The one thing I've learned about football, it's kind of ironic, when the quarterback throws the ball, in our league, there's only one name on it. It's the commissioner's name. It doesn't belong to the offense. But if you think it belongs to the offense, if you don't play the ball and play the man, you get on highlight tapes like this. The guy catches the ball, and you're sitting there, and, you know, play the ball. I mean, it's a free ball once it's in the air. If you just go attack the ball, uh, you got a chance to maybe defend it. Coach Herm Edwards with Armin in the back on 104.5, the team, your home for New York sports, uh, brought to you by McLean Food Service. Uh, I loved Odell Beckham Jr., what he said after the game when they said, greatest catch ever, and he goes, I don't think, I hope it's not the greatest catch I ever make, and we didn't win the game, so I don't even want to talk about it. You like to hear that from a rookie, don't you? Well, you like to hear out of anybody, and I think the way the guy was raised, he gets it. Um, you know, this guy's going to be a fantastic football player, and you're hoping he can stay healthy because he's not the biggest guy. Uh, in the world, but uh, he's got he's got good bloodlines. Uh, when you go back and you trace his father and his mom, they were both athletes, and and he's a guy that um, when you just watch him work, I think he has good work ethic, in the fact that he doesn't just live on his talent. And, and, and a lot of times you see guys that uh, come into this league and and they play on talent alone. And I've always told players this: talent's a gift. It's and it could be a curse when you don't live up to it. And, and he's going to be a guy that's constantly working on his skill. And so you want guys like this to have success.
How exciting is it to look at the Giants Cowboys matchup now? You got Des Bryant on one side, Odell Beckham Jr. on the other. Well, and Victor Cruz is a pretty good player, and you know, there's a lot of good players. You know, I, I'm not I'm not one to single out guys. I, I just believe this is a league that there's a lot of unique players that play in this league. They're all very talented. Um, a lot of it has to do with timing. Uh, the team you play on, when you play on the team, if you're a wide receiver, who the quarterback is. There's been a lot of wide receivers that are really good players that have played with three or four quarterbacks. And, and so, the, you know, you never see them. I mean, so, right. you know, this league is about, you know, being in position and also being in a situation where things are going for you. Right now the Giants are struggling some. They've got a good quarterback. Uh, but at times the offensive line's kind of in flux. Last, last night I thought they were very competitive. They had a chance to win. But the Dallas Cowboys are playing good. They really are. And, and regardless if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan or not, they've been very consistent of how they played. And when that game was in the fourth quarter and Tony Romo got the ball, you sensed that the Dallas had a belief. They weren't the Cowboys were going to self-destruct. They were like, okay, we got the ball. We got Tony Romo. Uh, we got Murray. We got a nice offensive line. We're going to move the ball down the field and score. And, and that's what good teams do, and that's what great quarterbacks do on the road. The one thing about quarterback play can you win on the road in the fourth quarter when you have the last possession? And Tony Romo's done that a lot. Now, he gets credit more for the times that he messes up. Right. And we remember that, Tony Romo. But if they keep playing the way they're playing, Tony Romo, you know, he's playing well. This, this, this football team's playing well. Herm Edwards with Armin and LeVac live from Bristol. Thanks to our friends at McLean Food Service. Coach, uh, the Cowboys sure rely on the run a lot. They should. A lot. That's their best player. But what if he? Did they rely on him so much? If anything happens to Demarco Murray, yeah. Well, if and that, that's if anything happens to the quarterback, okay. I mean, you can't worry about that. I mean, no he, concerns he, at all. No, no, really. No, the ball's not heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys hit the ball. Not heavy. No, no, it's not heavy. I mean, you know, we get concerned about things uh, before they happen. I don't believe in that. I believe in you. You. You give the best player the ball when you can. He's their best player. When you give him the ball, he protects your offense, but he protects your defense. Because they stay on the field. And, and that's the Cowboys' trouble. If you expose them, they got exposed last night a little bit. The Giants moved the football. But once the Cowboys got into rhythm and they ran the ball, the Giants never got the ball back. The Cowboys had the ball. And, and, and when you have a guy like this, he helps Tony Romo. He helps everyone. And so this is how you have to play if you're going to go to the playoffs. Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos found their running game last night. The right. first half, they were awful. They couldn't block. They couldn't block anybody, and they haven't done that last couple of weeks. But they found a runner last night. Fourth and two to me was the biggest call in the game in the third quarter. It's fourth and two. You have Peyton Manning, one of the best quarterbacks in captivity, and they turn around and hand it to somebody. They hand it to the runner. Yeah. They make twenty yards, and from there they score twenty two points unanswered. They found their way last night. The Denver. When you watch, you know everybody watches the game and all that. But there's certain points in games, and there's certain things you watch about teams. They found their toughness last night. That will bode well for them as they run to the playoffs. Coach, when you bring up toughness, uh, the, take you back to that Giants, uh, Giants line, mm-hmm. Jeff Schwartz goes out there. How much difference in one offensive line make for a whole offensive line? Well, they play together as a unit like a glove. And, and, and when you think of great offensive lines, the first thing is if they can play together uh, for a whole year without missing time, that that always helps. When you see lines in, in influx where they have different players playing, because they all have to be in tune to what each other you know, is, is asked to do, required to do, but it hurt them because now all of a sudden you put a young guy in. You watch the Washington Redskins. Their left tackle, got a great left tackle. He gets wow. hurt. They put a rookie left tackle in there. Guess who lines up over him? Smith. Alden <laughs> yeah, Smith, right? Yeah, the next yeah. two things, what happens? Robert Griffin's laying on his back. Right. So it's tough. I mean, those guys don't get enough credit because they don't play with the football. When you look at the Cowboys' offensive line, Ooh. Tony Romo last night on that game-winning touchdown drive, how long did he have? I mean, back in the pocket, he could, have ordered, he could have ordered lunch, get something to drink. Well, train, yeah, out. we mentioned today on Sports Center. I said, you know, he got in the pocket. You know, if you remember the story, you know, driving Miss Daisy. They grabbed those guys. He's just driving Miss Daisy. They couldn't get to the quarterback. He's just running around. He looked over there. He looked over there and says, oh, by the way, I have a sandwich. Okay, I got to have a sandwich. Oh, can I have another one of yours? And it was one of those deals. And, and this is where, when you look at the Giants, this is where they're lacking. Offensive line and defensive line. Historically, the Giants' DNA is built that way. When you think about the great Giant teams, they've always had the ability to rush a quarterback with four guys. They had a tough offensive line where they could run the football. You know, running's about testing a man's will. It's, it's other words, you're standing on a spot, and I'm going to knock you off that spot. I'm going to test you. That's what football's all about. 
when it all boils down to that at the end, it's I'm going to tackle this guy or I'm going to run over you. It, it's testing a man's will. How tough are you when it, 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 it when when I continue to hit you? Are, are you willing to hit me back? And football is about it starts on the offensive line and defensive line. When you can test a guy's will and move a guy off a spot, knowing I don't want to move off the spot, but you move me off this spot, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. When you tackle a guy and you look into his eyes, there's a certain look when you hit a guy and you know I got him. It, it, you know, all that other stuff's good. The, what you guys watch on television, right. the guy catch the ball, run for the, when, you, when you're competitive and you play that game, it's about testing a guy's will. It's not to hurt a guy, but it's when you, when you make contact with a guy and you look him in the eye, there's this look that you go, hmm, it's going to be a long day, or you go, I got this guy. That's what football is all about. It's never going to change. I don't care how many passes they throw. I don't care what. It, that, it, it all boils down to that, and the good teams have enough of those guys. When you get into big moments and they hit the guy, it, they hit him, and they look at him, and you go, got him. Got him. You know. Well, it's funny because when you say that, I think of, you know, big-time playmakers. And you've told us before, you said, big-time offensive playmakers for the New York Giants are who? Big-time playmakers for the New York Giants are, they're lacking some big-time playmakers. They got one now. Beckham. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. they got Cruz when he's, when he's healthy. So they, 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 they've got some parts. But here again, it, it, it goes back to this. It's the belief of this. Can you make big plays in big moments? And that's what great players do. When the light is the brightest, they appear. Some guys run for the shade. Some guys run for the spotlight. You want the guys to run for the spotlight. You don't want the guys to run into the shade. And, and, and the teams that possess those guys generally in big moments, they make plays like Beckham did last night. Right. And that's what you want to see. So, so basically what you're saying is uh, the New England Patriots, mm. they're a spotlight team. They play three division leaders. They, they beat them down. Is that, is that Belichick in a nutshell? Just I'm going to keep hitting you and see if you want to keep getting Well, up? Bill Belichick is, uh, uh, is uh, what I call game plan specific. When you think about what they did against Detroit, that wasn't surprising to me. Um, the prior week, they had a different game plan. They played the Colts and ran the ball. 44 times right. for over 200 yards. Why? And we're going to let Andrew Luck beat him. So we're going to run the ball, possess the ball, we're going to knock him off the ball. They play the Detroit Lions, number one team defensively in football. Dominica Sue and all those guys. They say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to line up in open formation, and we're going to go some no huddle, and we're going to wear these guys out, and we're going to throw it 55 times. I heard you call that earlier in the day. Well, that's what they pay me to do, you know, to <laughs> give, give, give my analysts. You know, that analyst, you know, so every once in a while I get it right. <laughs> and so it didn't surprise me what was going to happen because, I, first of all, I've competed against Coach enough times, and I understand his mindset of what he's going to try to do. So it's kind of ironic when you watch it unfold and you say, look, the two things I do know, big games, Coach Belichick is coaching a lot of them, right. and the quarterback has played in a lot of them. They have no fear. They have no fear. They fear no opponent. They respect them, but they fear none. And that's their mindset when they play. And the other guys around them, the surrounding cast, your, your leaders have to possess that. And if they possess that, guys will follow. They've been in enough big games to know, this is our plan, this is what we're going to do. Let's execute our plan. And do a great job of that. Coach Herm Edwards with Armin in the back on 104.5, the team, your home for New York sports, uh, Jets, Bills tonight. Suddenly this game for the Buffalo Bills uh, with the, the teams that lost around them, the Dolphins, the Chiefs, suddenly this game could mean a little more than we thought it was going to mean as a Friday. Well, it can, and, you know, they all mean something, to be quite honest. I mean, even the team has only won one game. We saw the Raiders win a game against Kansas City, and I think sometimes you lose sight of that. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of preparation that goes into a season. And it doesn't start when the season starts. It actually starts in the off season. Once the season's over with, you collectively, as an organization, you look at what type of football team you are. Then there's a common draft. There's free agency. There's OTAs. There's mini camps. There's all these things that go on behind closed doors that no one ever sees. And then that's part of the training camp. Then you go and you have this, you have this mindset of, hey, this is what we want to do. And it's, it's to try to win a game. <laughs> to, to be quite simple, and it, it's about winning one game. It's not trying to win every game. It's just win one because you can't win you can't win them all unless you win the first one. So you just try to win one game every week, and it's your preparation that week. If you're the Buffalo Bills, you're a five and five football team. You got to look at yourself and go, okay, look, are we in the playoffs? No, 
But if we win out, maybe we get in the playoffs. But we got to win this game this week. And right. we can't worry about what everybody else does. I mean, you, you, that's one thing about you know, sports. You can't control what the other guys do. Right. You just got to go win your games. You, you win enough games, and you get to play in the tournament. And that's what it's about. It's about, you know, you, when the season starts, you get 16 games. That's on your schedule. That's a given. You get right. to play 16. But it's not about the 16. It's about the tournament. It's right. about, can I win enough in the tournament Pause my ticket. Says, so, I can get in the, so I can get in the big one? Right. Because the big one will allow you, if you win enough games, you become a world champion. And all players and coaches, that's, that's the goal. Armin and Levac live from Bristol, Connecticut at ESPN headquarters with Coach Herm Edwards brought to you by McLean Food Service on 104.5 The Team. Is, uh, Coach, has too much been made of the, of the storm in Buffalo and, and the advantage that it has given the Jets? Or, or is that a real advantage now that, with the Bills having to leave home, go to Detroit, not have the same prep time as the Jets? If you allow it to be. Uh, and I think if you're a professional football player, you, you deal with inconvenience. It's, it's, very, it's very important. You've got to deal with inconvenience. It, that's life. And, and I think if you're the Buffalo Bills early, you just felt like, what are we doing right here? And it was more concern of your families right. than anything else. Players are players. They get it. They get it. So they missed a couple days, whatever it may be. They added a Wednesday and a Thursday practice together the day before yesterday. They had to go on the road. Sometimes that can be good. You know, they went on the road together. Now as a team, as long as your families are safe, these guys are going to be okay. They're going to be fine. They've played in this stadium before this year. They beat Detroit in this dome. So maybe that's a good thing. Okay, we've been in the place we've already won, and they're going to have a bunch of fans there. No telling who they're going to be, you know, rooting for, but right. they're, they're going to be people in the game. So it's not like you're playing to a, where no one's in the game, but it's a game. It's, it, it's, one of, it's a game, one that you get to play. It's not at home. doesn't matter. They need to win this game. They know it. The logistics of this thing has been mm. crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, you said as a player in the NFL, you know, you, you deal with, with things like this. But this is almost it's somewhat unprecedented, the, the way that uh, from last Thursday, the way that the storm came. And have you ever dealt with any situation where a game is moved or, or you're not sure if you're going to play there or your, your, your plans get derailed like this? Well, we had one a couple times. There have been a couple of ones that I've been involved in. One was, one was Kansas City. We actually were going to Detroit. And it was snowing in Kansas City, and um, you have a certain time you're supposed to get on the plane and go. And we sat in Kansas City because of the weather for like three hours on an airplane. <laughs> and um, you know we got to get there the next. We got because we got to play the next day. So we finally arrived at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. And guess what? They didn't move the game back to four o'clock. <laughs> you had to go play. You know, right. and that's just that's part of it. And you you can't worry about it. you can. You know, in life, you can make excuses all you want. Nobody cares. They really don't care. They kick the ball. I always tell players, look, all I need is 11 guys. You can kick the ball over 1 o'clock. Who wants to play? I love it. Let's go play. 11 o'clock. You know, 1 o'clock they play. I need 11 players. Let's go play. I love it. Now, um, <clears throat> also, like with this game this evening, a lot is being made of, of the future of the Jets and all that. You don't let that factor in, right? Like, you don't worry about, just like you said, it's one game at a time. Rex yeah. Ryan is not going in there saying, hey, guys, uh, no. let's win tonight. No coach me. ever worries about that. No. Coaches know that. Um, your job is to prepare your football team to win a football game. If you're worried about your job in the National Football League as a player or as a coach, wrong league. Wrong league right. to be involved in. You don't take it personal. You really don't. I mean, the one thing about coaching and playing in this league, eventually you don't generally leave on your own terms. Right. And that's not personal. That's just what's the business of the game. It doesn't make you be a bad coach or a bad player. It has nothing to do with that. It's just this is what the league's all about. I learned that at a very young age. Um, when they uh, traded Willie Mays, that almost broke my heart from San Francisco. When I saw the Dallas Cowboys, and I was a little bit older at that time, fire Tom Landry. Mm -hmm. I was like, you fire Tom Landry? I mean, so to me, it was like, if they fire Tom Landry, I mean, if I get in this business, who am I? I mean, that's Tom Landry now. <laughs> that's the man with the fedora. I mean, right. I get it. Right. I mean, I, I, know what this man, I know what this man meant to football. So I just think you don't take it personal. You just understand that's part of the business. You know, a lot of people say, if anything, you, you, I've always worried about the families. You know, you see the coach, but he has children, he has a wife, but that's the profession you lead. And it's, you know, it's, it, it, you know, you can't stand in a place for a long time. Uh, I was in the league for 30 years on four teams. I got no complaints. Right. I mean, you know, I've been traded. I've been fired. I've been hired. It don't matter. 
It's all good. It's just you, you, you deal with it. You go, okay, and you don't take a person. You don't get mad at owners. You don't get mad. You just say, you hey, man, it's part of business. Happens well, all it time. all led to this lush studio we're in now. <laughs> oh, it's a worldwide leader now, man. Yeah. There's panels falling off the I'll wall. I'll make sure when they were doing the renovation, they forgot about this place. <laughs> we lucked uh, out, though. We're uh, in a broom closet, I think. Uh, Coach, this has been great. I know you uh, You got tons of TV heads. You've been on Sports Center multiple times today. You got another one. You got NFL Live coming yeah, up at got 4 NFL o'clock. Live four. I uh, wonder what we're going to talk about. NFL Live. There's nothing to talk about today. <laughs> Cardinal C. I mean, there was nothing out of that game. What would you learn there that the Seahawks are, are still still in it and the Cardinals got exposed for kind of what, what we thought they would at some point? Well, that's a tough place to play. Uh, the Seahawks had to win this football game. The Cardinals, as you know, I think they win this division. I do believe they can win two more games. They can get to 11. Right. I think 11 wins the division. The Seahawks... They have to win games now, and as, as well as San Francisco. I don't know if all three of those teams show up in the playoffs. So this is going to be a big game for, for obviously, San Francisco and Seahawks. They, they play again. And, and, and I thought last uh, yesterday the Seahawks showed their, uh, their, their championship form. It came out last night. Their, their, their backs were a little bit against the wall. They needed to win a home game against a division opponent that had beat them there last year. And uh, it was a defensive game. It, that we, you knew that was gonna, it was going to be that. And uh, they made enough plays uh, at home to, to win a game to keep them going. So it's going to be interesting down the stretch. Coach Herm Edwards with Armin and Levac. Thanks to McLean Food Service and 104.5 The Team. Dave Spencer, McLean Food Service, here with us today at Bristol, Connecticut. Great place to work. McLeanCo.com. Voted one of the best places to work in uh, Albany and the Albany Business Review. Coach, this has been cool uh, talking to you in person. And it's it's great, too, because every single week one of my highlights is when you put Levac in his place. Sometimes, oh, no. Sometimes I just, he brings I mean, up some it's, questions. It's, it's, gets you it, go- he gets you going. No, now. it's never personal. It's, you know what? In life, you better enjoy it. You better have right. fun in life. Well, because I'm a fan. You got it. You got it. Hey, man, you know I what? It. I wake up every morning and I smile. I really do because our life's not a dress rehearsal, guys. It's really not. You so, what, you so what get you're time saying back. is I'm your favorite. Not in our, well, you know, I, I have no enemies. I really don't. I try to treat people like I like to be treated. Um, I, I respect everyone, and um, that's just how I'm built. I, I just think that life is short. You got to smile more, man. It, yeah. It's it, it's not hard to be nice. It's really not. It's not hard to be nice. You, you want to be. You want to treat people the way you want to be treated. And if you do that, your life is, is is pretty easy. It's not that complicated. I think sometimes we complicate it with a lot of things that we worry about that we don't control. The one thing I can control every day is my attitude and and how I'm gonna go about doing my doing my job. You know, and, and I love what I do. I, I love being around people, and I just think that uh, sometimes we lose sight of that. We get caught up in all this other stuff, and it's just stuff, guys. Just stuff. Coach, you've been a great host today, too. It's we really awesome. appreciate it. Thank you, man. My pleasure. I'm going to go do some TV. I got face for TV, so I'm going to go do some TV. Now, <laughs> you right, guys man. sit right here on this radio. Right. Nobody yeah. will know you in here. I yeah, won't you tell go you. go be with the beautiful people. Yeah. We'll stay back here you in our Put some makeup on men. That's, that's a wonderful no, thing to do. Nobody can find us. You don't have to worry about that. There goes Coach Herm Edwards, Norman in the back of 104.5 The Team, brought to you by McLean Food Service.